I've always wondered why a car as dynamic and refined as the Golf was named after such a boring and basic ball game. But as it turns out, Volkswagen named the vehicle after the Gulf Stream winds, which is kind of appropriate on a day like today. Naming conventions aside, the Golf has long been the small car benchmark. But does that still apply to the eighth generation wagon version? Let's find out. Starting life in 1974, the Golf has accumulated almost 36 million sales globally over around 50 years, overtaking the iconic Beetle as Volkswagen's all-time bestseller. I'm testing the top-spec Golf Life model grade in family-friendly wagon form, and its longer body stretches the hatch's 4.3 metre length to just over 4.6 metres. It also stretches the price by $2,000 over the hatch, which is already several grand more than before. But the more voluminous Golf is still a lot cheaper than the only other wagon in its class, the Mini Clubman, and you get plenty of extra boot space for the extra coin, which we'll get to later. In terms of exterior design, the Golf has always struck a safe balance between an understated broad appeal and a avant-garde premiumness across seven generations, but I reckon this eighth generation has missed the mark. Of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and details like the standard LED headlights and tail lights are neat, but the front end of the Mark 8 Golf already looks a bit dated to me. The searing pomelo yellow color does not do it any favors either. And under the sleeker bonnet is the same 1.4 liter turbo petrol engine that powered its predecessor. Outputs are competitive and performance is solid, but Australians miss out on the newer, more efficient 1.5 litre petrol and plug-in hybrid powertrains available in Europe. That means the Golf's dual-clutch automatic transmission is also off-limits for Aussies, with a conventional 8-speed automatic driving the front wheels instead. The new Golf wagon is not off to the greatest start, but the cabin looks schmick. No doubt about it. The uncluttered design is beautifully presented and it features loads of technology and for the most part, high quality materials almost everywhere. And this gives it an unequivocally premium feel. And I love the stubby little Porsche-like gear shifter and simplified parking controls. Like the rest of the cabin, the dashboard has an upmarket look and feel and these touch sensitive reading lights are mint, but look, some parts come across a little bit cheap and chintzy. The form-fitting seats are really comfy. They've got really good cushioning, but this cloth upholstery, it feels coarse, and for 40K, you don't even get power-operated seats either. The leather-clad steering wheel looks and feels great, with well-labeled and easy-to-use controls, along with tilt and reach adjustments. Storage is pretty good. You've got two phone holders, one here and one here, two cup holders, adjustable too, nice. A small central bin and big door pockets with soft lining, very nice. There are two USB-C ports and a 12 volt socket, but there's no sunglasses holder and no secret underseat cubbies. When it comes to tech, Volkswagen has created a sophisticated setup and this 10 inch touchscreen is just gorgeous, but it's let down by average execution and it takes a long time to boot up. Come on buddy. The menu system isn't too bad, with an intuitive interface, good functionality, and super sharp visuals. And I really like the user-friendly climate control options, and the sliders for temperature and volume adjustment are pretty cool as well. Apart from these sliders here, it just kind of feels like a reskinned version of the previous model's multimedia system. There's no showstoppers or party tricks to encourage current owners to trade up. You do get a wireless phone charger and wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connectivity as standard. So if you forget your cable, no drama. There's a crisp and clean 10.25 inch digital instrument display with loads of customizability. There's a lot of functionality here. It's really nice and even a map function. But if you want a head up display, it's gonna cost you extra. There's no 360 degree overhead parking view, just a reversing camera along with front and rear sensors there are auto parking functions too. 
And naturally, the Golf comes with every advanced driver assistance system you'd expect of a European car, along with an impressive eight airbags. It also has a five-star ANCAP safety rating. Backseat room and amenity is really good. I've got plenty of headroom here, loads of legroom, plus twin USB-C ports, climate control with air vents, touch sensitive LED reading lights, and the best seat back pockets ever. How good is that? There's a fold out armrest and through loading hatch for skis or javelins, or broomsticks, or lancers. Wagon fans will be stoked with the power tailgate, and the boot is suitably large for a small car. Compared to the hatch, you get a lot more space. When you fold down the seats with these handy quick release latches, load length rises to around 1.8 meters. Hello, IKEA flatback furniture. You also get this two stage cargo cover here. Boom, boom, and there's a secondary pet net or cargo net. Plus, there are four tie down hooks. You've got the bag hooks here. There's even a 12 volt socket under here, but only one light. There's a space saver spare wheel under here, but look at all that room. If you don't stow the cargo blind, there's easily enough room here for a full size spare wheel. There's clearly a lot more room there and the roof racks give you even more carrying capacity. But does the extra length affect the way it drives? Cue the feel good music. Right away, there's a sense of balance and confidence about the way this Golf drives, and it feels almost as sure-footed as the hatch. While the steering is super light, the German-engineered and calibrated suspension has a touch of sportiness to it that delivers excellent road holding and control. This is a really lovely car to drive, and while it doesn't quite have the ride comfort of a Toyota Corolla, it's still pretty good on rougher roads. While the older engine and gearbox are inferior to newer European powertrains, they're actually a pretty good combo, delivering sharp throttle response and more than enough thrust. Refinement levels are impressive. In fact, noise suppression is a real strength of the new Golf, making the cabin feel as calm and quiet as some larger luxury cars. The wagon is slightly heavier and therefore a little thirstier than the hatchback, but you can still get good fuel economy here. Look, the A-pillars are a little thick and can obscure your vision out to the right a little bit, but it's no worse than any other small car out there. And despite the longer body, rearward vision is really good, thanks to that flat rear window and the large central mirror. While it doesn't have that high ride height that SUVs have, you get comparable boot space, and it's probably easier to drive in some ways because it's a little bit narrower and it handles a little bit better. It's really easy to park as well. Unlike some German brands, this car is backed by a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty and a range of prepaid and cap price service plans are also available. No, the latest Golf is not a quantum leap forward over the accomplished model it replaces, but it does make incremental gains in the areas that really matter and remains the benchmark non-premium small car in terms of driving dynamics. Not everyone's going to be convinced that the higher price Golf is good value for money. But if you've got the cash, you're not going to be disappointed with this vehicle. And especially if you need the extra flexibility offered by a small wagon. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Check out all our other videos on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe because if you don't, I'll be out of a job and I'll be on the street selling bits of recycled copper. Thanks.